Hi everyone, Greg from RPM Technic here and today I'm with Dave in the engine room and we're going to be talking about crown wheel and pinions that we fit into all of the 718 and 981 uh, Caymans, Boxsters, GT4s and Spiders with the manual transmission. So Dave, let's start at the beginning. What is a crown wheel and pinion? Uh, basically, it's uh, the means of transferring the power from the engine to the road wheels. Yeah. So following going through the gearbox, which obviously gives you really different ratios, this shaft here, the pinion shaft, is driven um, by the power of the engine essentially mm -hmm. and that engages in this crown wheel which is attached to the differential uh, which in turn drives the rear wheels. So this is the final sort of ratio drop down mm -hmm. between the transmission and the back axle. So when we say we're lowering the gearing, how do you actually do that? What are we going to be doing? Uh, basically, the, it's by altering the relative size and number of teeth between the pinion and the crown wheel. Okay. So if we have fewer teeth on the pinion and or more teeth on the crown wheel, that lowers the ratio between the two. So as a way to lower the gearing in the GT4's uh, Spider transmissions, why was this our chosen solution? Uh, there are obviously other ways of doing the same thing. You, know, you, you can change the individual gears. Um, on the shafts as well um, to, to achieve the same thing but on these gearboxes as with many um, a couple of the gears are actually part of the input shaft um, so they can't be independently changed so you're then into having to change the input shaft and gear sets as well yeah. um, so this this was just a not an easier but it was a, a simpler way to achieve largely the same thing mm -hmm. um, but you know if we still have the option of altering sixth gear for example yeah. Um, to essentially give it an overdrive gear, um, but it, by doing it this way, it gives the option of because some some people prefer to have the low ratio throughout. Some prefer to have a, a high ratio sixth gear alone um, mm -hmm. if they're spending a lot of time on the autobars, for example, or something yeah. like that. It's just more comfortable. Um, so really, it means that we can tailor it better to what what an individual wants to do with their car. So from start to finish, what does the job actually involve? Uh, well, to do the whole job, um, starting first of all with removing the transmission from the car, which um, on these cars can be done leaving the engine in, yeah. um, so transmission alone comes out. Uh, then we fully strip the transmission down, um, obviously at this stage because they're essentially fairly new cars, most of them, um, you know, it's unlikely we're ever going to find anything at the moment that, that is worn out, like synchros, that kind of thing, but obviously while it's a part, I would automatically check everything like that mm -hmm. uh, and in time we may find we have to start changing those sort of components but at the moment you know they're generally new gearboxes um, so once it's all stripped down um, then obviously the original crown wheel and pinion will, have, will be removed from it um, and then there's a number of things that need to be set up inside the gearbox um, the first thing that has to be set is the uh, relative position of this pinion because um, that can be moved in and out essentially mm -hmm. um, by, by means of changing various shims on it. Um, so that's the depth of, of, of the mesh of the pinion, which is the first thing to set up. Um, once that's done, the bulk of the gearbox can then be reassembled. Um, depending on what's been changed there, I then have to change other um, shimming to reset the position of the gears. Um, but then once, once that's done, the, uh, the differential, we always put new bearings on that as a matter of course. Um, so the first thing we have to do is set the what's called the preload of the diff. Mm -hmm. um, so that involves uh, working out the um, amount of shimming that requires to preload the taper roller bearings on either end to the right degree. Um, once that's done, then the crown wheel gets bolted on, and the final setup is the amount of, of backlash um, between the teeth on there. So um, they, they should have an element of free play. You don't want the, the teeth tightly meshed, mm -hmm. although it would seem obvious that you would do. That it is designed to have a certain amount of, of space there, yeah. um, and so there's a yeah. It, it's a case of taking measurements and doing calculations to get the, the backlash correct on that. Um, the main reason for doing that is partly to reduce wear or minimise the amount of wear, um, but the other reason also is that um, it will be noisy apart from anything else if the backlash is too tight or too loose, mm -hmm. um, the transmission will be noisy afterwards. So it's, it's, it's those two things, it's for quiet operation and, and you know, long life. So as a concept of actually lowering the gearing in a car, is, is this something new? No, not at all. We've been doing this for years. Um, the, the, the first cars that it became commonplace on were the GT3s from 996 onwards. Yeah. Um, at, at that stage, Porsche were producing a, a low ratio farm drive themselves, 
which was for the cup car, mm -hmm. um, but that was that you could fit that directly into the road cars as well. So um, yeah, I, I was doing those on cars back then when they were literally brand new, coming from the showroom, having that mod done mm -hmm. um, before customers even drove them. So um, it, it's been a, a, a pretty much an accepted way of doing things for a long, long time now. So whilst the transmission's apart and you've got it in a thousand different pieces, um, are there actually any upgrades or any things that you can change as a, as a cost option for the client once it's all apart? Yeah, obviously while the gearbox is out of the car, um, it does give the option of uh, fitting a lightweight clutch and flywheel at that stage, which just helps the engine to rev a bit more freely. Mm -hmm. um, inside the gearbox itself, although it's not relevant at the moment while they're still new, uh, in time, as things like synchros begin to wear, uh, it gives us the option of reporting that at the time, and, and you know those bits could be done as a preventive measure going further forward. Um, in terms of the gearing itself, uh, the, the is the option of changing the ratio on sixth gear alone, as I mentioned earlier, um, just to give it a longer gear for if, if you're going on the autobahn, so there could be a you know. A, a, a much higher ratio for people that are traveling a lot in Europe, that kind of thing. So um, that ratio can be varied a bit. Mm -hmm. um, so that can be done. Um, and then other than that, the, the, the other thing that, that we can look at is uh, altering the behavior of the LSD. Um, again, if, if people are doing a lot of track days, they might want something that's a bit more aggressive for circuit use. Um, other people may not if they're <laughs> primarily a road car. So um, it gives us that you know, option of, of tunability on the diff, depending on what somebody wants to do with the car. So in the uh, eyes of fairness and balance, are there actually any downsides to fitting this? Um, yeah, there are realistically, but only in terms of the fact that, um, obviously, especially if you don't have the um, higher sixth speed uh, gear in it, um, the, your top speed of the car is going to be less. Mm -hmm. um, but realistically, given how capable the cars are, the, the chances of using the full full speed on them is fairly limited anyway. <laughs> um, so the benefit of the low down performance increase, I, I think greatly outweighs the, the reduction in the top speed. Um, have heard reports from other people that have tried this sort of thing around the world. Um, there's, the, it has led to issues with um, ECU problems in terms of coming up with full codes on the on the dashboard and, and you know the wrong information coming up on the dash. Um, which is all an electronic problem, which is you know what, what comes up now on a lot of these modern cars. Um, so consequently, we've had to do a lot of research and development to combat that, and uh, we, we now have a solution that reprograms part of the ECU um, so that the, the car understands what we've done, mm -hmm. and so it doesn't see these changing ratios as a fault. It's now programmed into the car. Um, so that's something that, that, as far as I know, we're fairly unique in, in having done that. So we've got the Porsche standard Cranwell and Pinion out of the car we've previously converted on this side and our solution on, on the further side over here. So if we just have a quick look at them, what, what are the actual differences between them and is there anything you've noticed in the ones you've transferred so far? Uh, the, the main physical difference that's evident is you can see that this Pinion on the modified one is smaller than yeah. the original. Um, that's where largely where the ratio change comes from. Um, in terms of the differences, in terms of quality, the, I have seen a, a, an original factory GT4 gearbox where the case hardening on the pinion teeth had failed. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a car that had been used extensively on track, so it had a hard time, but nonetheless, it was a bit of a surprise on a relatively new car to see that. Um, I've been using this manufacturer for ground wheels and pinions um, for, well, must be at least 10 years now, I would think. Um, and as yet, I've never seen any problem with them whatsoever. So I'd, I'd confidently say that the, these are at least as good quality, if not better, than the uh, than the OE Porsche ones. So hopefully you found that interesting and that answered a lot of questions that you may or may not have had. If you're interested in having this conversion done to your car and you'd like to speak to us direct, contact us through the website uh, and we'll be happy to help.